step one of swapping from one building automation system to another is to look at the points on the old system. They're all listed here. And you check that with the controllers. So here we have one through 28. And on the sheet we have one through 28. So those ought to line up and it'll tell you what they are. Pumps and ISO valves and everything else. Now down here we have some more. A one through 30 and again, one through 30. So those match up and we're fairly confident that they should be correct. Next, you're gonna buy a controller. So we're using Distech. And based on the old points, we're gonna buy the correct controller that can handle all these inputs and outputs. Once we have selected our controller, we need to configure that controller with all of the new points. We have a department that does that for us. So they send me a spreadsheet that looks an awful lot like that. And so when I come in, I'm matching the old ones to the old hardware and the new ones to the new hardware. And I'm determining if I need any relays to convert any of the outputs from universal to binary. The next thing I'm gonna do is verify that I've got a good ethernet connection. So I've installed a, a Jace and I had to come to the switch, find an open port, run an ethernet wire over and terminate both ends plug the Jason in and power it up and then talk to the IT department to get that port opened up so that I could get external access. I still only have one Ethernet port available. We have um, verified that we have external access and so even though we have one good port I needed to install this internet switch, Ethernet switch so that I can put my ECY, my DISTEC controller here and plug that in. I had to make some room for that ECY controller to go in it's going to be rather large. It's going to take up a bunch of room in this panel. So I took that um, transformer. It was up here, and I, I unscrewed it, moved it down, and screwed it back in to give myself some more real estate. Once I've got the ECY installed and plugged into Ethernet, and I can verify remote access, the next thing I'm going to do is start putting things in hand. So I've got chill water pumps, primary and secondary chill water pumps. I've got condenser water pumps. I've got cooling towers. All these fans and pumps are going to need to be in hand while I do the switchover so that the loop stays cold. So here, for instance, there are two relays up there and they control isolation valves. Those are the isolation valves. One of, uh, or two out of three, so there's actually three isolation valves, but two out of three of the relays are lit, which means that two of those valves are open. Now those are rib relays and I know that the orange and yellow wire are going to be connected when the relay is lit and so if i want to bypass that relay i can go to that junction box and i can take the orange and yellow wires and i can bundle them together so that the i think it's 120 volt flows through all the time and will keep that isolation valve open um, i also have to be careful because the blue i will need to disconnect the blue because these are power open power closed so if that relay loses signal when I take the controller offline you know little light goes off and then blue will also be connected so I'll be if I have yellow and orange jumped blue then also is connected everything's connected so it's trying to power open and trying to power close at the same time and that's that's not gonna work out so I'll need to break blue and make orange and yellow most of the time you have to come and find your chiller command you know you ought to have a you ought to have a jumper somewhere on one of these boards uh, a lot of times there's a relay you know there'll be a relay mounted it's pretty obvious okay that's the, the start stop relay these particular chillers are a little different they run on com cards and so I can't just jump it on or if I can I need to do a little bit of research and figure out which terminal like see these here have jumpers those could be start stop terminals that's the kind of thing you're looking for in order to keep these pumps running, you can come to the VFD. If they have a VFD, you put it in hand and you run it up. You know, so it's running at 48 hertz right now, so I'll probably just run it at 48 hertz in hand. The other pumps do not have VFDs, and so I'm looking for the handoff auto switches, and here they are. Primary chill water pump one and two. And so I would just go from auto to hand to keep that running. The cooling towers have similar 
Similar handoff auto switches down below. They have a slow speed and a fast speed, so uh, it looks like they're running on slow right now. I'd probably just leave them running on slow. Once the plant is reliably running in hand, and then I have my ECY installed, I know that all 60, almost like a 58 of these points, are going to come into this area. So these up here will probably have to be lengthened, and those down here will certainly have to be lengthened and brought up, and it has to be done very neatly and all tied together. So a not, uh, another good idea is to pull them forward and start to label these wires according to the points list. So I got this controller out of the way. The ECY that I have is too big. It's 21 inches long when you stack them all together. So I had to move this controller up out of the way, mount this ECY, and give it an Ethernet connection. Now we're going to see if we have remote access. One other thing I wanted to mention about these isolation valves, you've got a rib relay with yellow as the common got 120 volt on it these are power open power closed 120 volt motors so the orange is for open and the blue is for closed so normally open is for open and normally closed is for closed so all I had to do to keep this thing open is disconnect the, the normally closed contact so that even if this relay goes off like it is now, stays open. When it's all said and done, we're going to be using a binary enable to start and stop this chiller. So I had to, because now, so right now they're on com cards, so they get their stop, start stop through the con cards. So what I had to do was I found this diagram tucked away inside the inside of the panel, and I looked for remote start stop, and it's going to be terminals 7, 1, and 8. So I went down and found 7 and 1 are there and 8 is there. So there they are. Um, it's 120 volt actually I think on that terminal because it shocked me a little bit. But um, I jumped 1 and 7 together so that should start the thing, right? Well, it didn't start right up. And uh, what I noticed was the control source was set to um, the com card basically it had uh, three let's see here ISN that's what it was set to before I had to set it to digital in order to get it to respond to that jumper to that binary input um, and I don't want this one to run that's why it was a good one to test the other one over there is already running, keeping the loop cold. So this one is kind of off, been off for a while. I think the ISO valve is probably shut on it. So I didn't want it to run, but I wanted to know that it would run. So I put it in digital and I put the jumper and it started to do its startup sequence. Like it starts the system pre-lube, right? So when I saw that, I said, okay, it's gonna try to start, but I don't want it to start. So I'm leaving it off, system stopped. So I've got the first 10 inputs, out, first 10 points, because <clears throat> they mix up inputs and outputs on these controllers. So the first 10 points uh, swapped over to the new controller. And what I'm having to do is pull this up out of the way. I'm having to extend the wires, you know, put some wire nuts and extend the wires down neatly and label them as I go and land them where they're supposed to be on each side. When I get all done, I'll put some zip ties and I'll fasten them to the case and I'll make it look good. Added some relays to convert uh, the universal outputs to the to binary outputs for some of the pumps. As I'm taking these points out one by one and running them down to my own controller, I'm feeding these wires back behind the bundle. Feed them back behind and run them all together. Basically just take the same path over and over and running everything behind gives you a good clean path and then as you get them done one by one the mess gets cleaned up and uh, you might be left with a few like from when they changed from Metasys to Computrols these were left over we may have some left over and you just got to kind of bundle them up out of the way but uh, if you just go behind every time you should most of it should be cleaned up following the same path so I've worked my way down this points list I'm on number 22 so number 22 is 
chill water supply flow. Okay, so they got a flow meter. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because there is a resistor across the input and the common. And so that tells me that this is gonna be a milliamp signal. So they've got probably a 249 ohm resistor in there. And so I'm gonna, now on this, on this ECY, I could open this up and there are little dip switches in there where you can set uh, voltage or milliamp. And so I, I don't have to use this resistor. I have 249 ohm resistors built into this ECY with dip switches and you can get in there and flip the switch and that's, that's great. I like to, if the, if the resistors are there, I like to just go ahead and use them. So I'll show you another one I did. You can put them in the terminals, but you can also put them in wire nuts. So the black is common and the yellow is the signal for that input. And you just need that resistor in parallel. So then you follow that down and it just goes into the controller. So you could put it right there across the red and the black, but it's the same thing to do it here across the red and the black. Just personal preference. So the types of inputs that are gonna need resistors are typically amp clamp transducers that tell you how much amperage is running through a circuit, flow meters, and differential pressure transducers. So here is a, a here's a differential pressure transducer, and you'll notice it's got a three wire setup. So when you follow it up, it's got three wires. So it's got an input, an input common, and then a power source. And so you want to take note of the type of power source. So it looks like that's 24 volt AC. So that's easy enough. We just need to jump that over to our AC power. And you'll notice that this differential pressure transducer does not have a resistor across the input. So, you know, it just depends on the type of differential pressure transducer. They can be set up to do zero to 10 or zero to five volt. So this one, hopefully this one, when you plug it in, it's just gonna work. So I just started putting in the ISO valves. My first ISO valve is here. And I realized that I was gonna need jumpers. I just got done making 20 or so tiny little jumpers to jump power down to all the commons of the outputs. And that is because these outputs are externally powered. Um, fun fact about the ECY, if you have a, an externally powered DO, it will only accept 24 volt. So it, it only has the ability to accept 24 volts into the common, and then there's a triac built into the controller, and it will switch and allow that 24 volts to flow out of the DO1. A universal output is always internally powered. So the power for an internally powered output comes from inside the controller. So the common will go to transformer common and the signal will come out of the output and it's connected internally with the power source coming into the controller. Now, yeah, the externally powered is sort of the opposite. So you have the, the power coming from an external source and then um, it's connected with a dry contact to the output. So most externally powered controllers, you could put whatever you want. It could be 24 DC, it could be 12 volts DC, and it just has a dry contact and it will output that voltage, whatever you put in, comes out. Um, but on an ECY, they are triac outputs and they only accept 24 volts AC. So if you have some other voltage you wanna put through, you're gonna to have to have a relay in between to create that dry contact. So as I'm getting down to the last points, so this is actually the last point, uh, point 28, and point 28 over here is blank. So now luckily, they ran the wire on the outside of conduit and it actually goes out to the cooling towers. I traced it all the way over. And it goes to uh, what looks like a flow meter and it, it's only two conductors so it seems like, so this is the other end of it here, seems like it should be an alarm. 
some sort of an alarm. I mean, it's probably not a transducer. It's probably just if too much makeup water is flowing into the system, it would trigger an alarm, I suppose. Not sure. I'll have to figure that one out. Now, there are some other things on this controller that I need to pay attention to. I have a 24 volt AC power source and I know that was plugged into the transformer, so I know what that is. And then also you have two wires, this gray wire, which I labeled 24 DC and this other wire 24 DC. They're coming in to these terminals here and they're meant for, they're meant to supply power to transducers. And uh, so I trace this up and over and I can see a differential pressure transducer there. And I can also see a flow meter coming off of that same junction box. So I think I can get away with using the, the 18 volt DC power supply that's built into the, the, to the ECYs. I'm gonna try that first. That way I don't have to install an external power supply. So we got, we got it hooked up. We got a couple more things we're still working on, pulling uh, chiller start stops. And we're starting to test and we're finding some problems. So I had to swap the chill water supply sensor. It was bad, swap that out. And then we're starting to test pumps and we're finding that the pump relays are 24 volt DC. So I had to swap, swap these ice cube relays for some ribs that'll take the correct signal but you just test one thing at a time. So that one, I had to swap. This one I had to swap. I think pump number one just worked. It had a 24 volt, regular 24 volt AC. So you just take them one at a time and see how they go. So there it is, my man Cedric's got the start stop relay tied in. We had to pull wire, crazy wire pull through all these conduits to get all the way back over to the box. One for every chiller took like two hours so the flow meter they need to know the range and the output signal and the units so units is gallons per minute the range is 0 to 1600 and the output signal is 0 to 10 VDC and all of that is used to configure the input and that's what a flow meter looks like there are different types but those are really common so we got the current transducers installed. Sometimes, sometimes they work right out of the box and you don't have to mess with anything. Sometimes you have to adjust the span. So there's a potentiometer there that you can adjust. And you know you've got the right span when you, know, you run the chiller and you take a reading with your amp clamp and say 70 amps. And then you adjust the span and you watch the, the EMS BAS and when it matches you know you've got you've got it set right and that's about it I've just got a little bit more cleanup in this box that needs to be done I've got to reroute these Ethernet cables a few more inputs that didn't quite test well but that's about it